far we've only looked at the minor pentatonic scale and adding the flat five to that to make it the minor blues scale. But a large portion of blues music isn't based around minor chords. It's based around a chord called a dominant seven, which is when you just see a chord like A7, D7, G7, whatever. When you see just a letter and a seven, that is a dominant seven. Now this is, um, basically it's major in tonality, um, but it can't, dominant is its own thing. It's a, it's a major chord, a major triad with a flat seven added, which some people call a minor seven. Um, I'll play you a couple of those chords and I'm sure you'll recognize the sound. <laughs> So we need to be able to solo over those chords. If you play the minor pentatonic scale, um, some licks will sound okay. But if you land on um, this note, for example, in A minor, which would be the flat third, which a lot of people would use the minor pentatonic scale for, landing on that note, over this chord, the A7, will sound horrible. If I just hit that C note here, over the chord, you can hear how it, it clashes, but if I do this, it sounds sweet. Now that is giving us another blue note, where we go from a minor third, a flat third, to a major third, which in A minor, one example would be here. So what we're going to look at is using a scale known as the Mixolydian Blues. It's the Mixolydian mode with some added notes to make it more bluesy. Those extra notes would be the flat three, the minor third, and the flat five, just like we added in on the minor pentatonic scale. And we're going to base it around the minor pentatonic framework. This will make it much easier for you to come up with licks and to incorporate this into your playing. Um, you only have to make a few little adjustments to make it fit. Um, so the first main adjustment like I said, we get this new blue note, like we did with a flat five. It's not a note that you want to linger on. You're not going to end a phrase on that. Well, you might want to, but um, 99 times out of 100, you wouldn't end a phrase on that note. You'd resolve it, and it sounds good. Now, when we're playing in this situation over dominant seven chords, we have to do the same with the flat three. So we could do a lick and land on that note, but then we need to resolve it. So we're gonna bring that flat three to the major third. So if I play that lick again, lick wasn't the same, but. You can hear how it resolves to that chord. So a, a general rule to apply is any time you land on a flat three, so in, in this scale shape it would be here or here, in A minor it's basically any C note, you want to make it a C sharp note. So you can land on it, but then either slide it up or bend it up to the major third. And that will make the world a difference to your licks. Straight away, you'll be fitting over those chords. Um, we get the same thing down here. So the notes that we can play, I'm going to show you all of the intervals for the Mixolydian Blues scale. Um, and you'll see that it is a lot of notes. Um, it's not necessarily a scale that you're going to run up and down like maybe you would have with a pentatonic. It's more of like a concept. Think of it, think of it as, um, you know, your licks in the minor pentatonic scale, but with notes that you can add in extra notes that you can add in. Don't think of like this, this scale I'm about to play as like a whole thing. These are just notes that are available to you. Yeah, if you do a run up, you haven't necessarily got to play all of them in one go. You can just pick and choose. But the key things to remember are if you land on that flat three, you're gonna wanna resolve it to a third. That's the main thing to remember that will transform the sound of your licks. And that's probably one of the most common mistakes I hear. When I hear guitar players, um, that are a bit more inexperienced, and that they solo over a dominant blues. Like I said, it's super common. There's you know 
large majority of blues songs are based around that, those chords, dominant seven chords. Um, doing licks landing on the flat three, and it sounds atrocious because they've just learned a bunch of minor pentonic licks. But if you do those same licks and just land on that note and bring it up one fret, it's going to sound cool. So I'll play all the notes all the way through. It's tabbed out as well. And I'll say the intervals as we go. If you don't understand about intervals, um, I definitely recommend you look it up and you learn about them. It's a really easy way to learn how chords and scales are constructed and to be able to transpose them because you learn them in a, a generic way. So the root note is always one. There's our root note. We then, um, on this string, and that's a two, a flat three, and a three. We can also play the flat three and the three here. We then got the fourth, flat five, five, sixth, flat seven, and that's back to one again, that's the octave. Up in the next octave, we have four, five, six, seven, eight to the flat five. If you want to move into position two, you can also do nine. Now, interval wise, that's a second, flat three, three, a fourth, a flat five, or a sharp four, but in this instance, it would normally be called a flat five, and then the five. Here, we've got another five. Same note. We play the sixth, flat seven, one. So I'm going to show you a few licks now based around, most of it's based around position one, just to show you how we can link those notes into um, licks. So like I said, if you just try and play that as like a run, it sounds pretty much like you're just playing the chromatic scale. And that's because you are, with the exception of two notes. Three notes. You can still play the same kind of licks as you did with the minor, because all of those notes from the minor pentonic scale are within that scale, but you've got to change which ones you land on. And we've got some extra ones to add in. So let's look at some of the licks, um, and they, they should give you some ideas, and, and practice over um, some dominant seven 12 bar blues back in tracks. Um, I'll have one available for download so that you can jam over that. Okay, so the first lick. Okay, we start off this lick on the uh, A note here, which is the seventh fret on the D string. And we're gonna do this little run up. Now, whenever I teach any students to start using this scale, um, I always find they struggle to get out of moving up the scale without doing this, which sounds very minor. So this is one of the first licks that I show people to get them to get that run out of their heads. So if you're moving up, um, you can have a more dominant sound, which is this. So seventh on the D, we then go five to six, which is the flat three, the minor third to the major third on the G string. We then go five to seven on the B, and then finish on the A note up on, five, on the fifth fret E string. We then come to the 7th fret on the B, we play it, then we're going to play it again and we're going to bend a semitone up to this note. So you'll notice that this one, the 7th fret on the B string, is a new note to the minor pentonic shape. Um, and this is a natural 6th and we're bending it up to a note that was in the minor pentonic scale, the flat 7. After we've bent that note up, we come back down and we play seven. We're then going to play five and hammer on back to the seventh on the B. We then come to the G string, and like I said before, we're playing the minor third, but we're going to immediately resolve it to the major third. With a hammer on five to six on the G string, and then we resolve it to uh, the root note of A, seventh fret, D string. I'll play that lick all the way through slowly. Okay, 
Okay, let's take a look at another lick. Again, still in position one of the minor pentonic scale, but obviously adding the extra notes to make it Mixolydian blues. So here we go. <laughs> Now these licks are super simple. Um, it's just to show you where these new notes are and um, mainly concentrating on where the flat third gets resolved to the major third. Okay, so we're starting off on the fifth fret on the B string. We play five to eight. We then come to um, the flat third note, which is the fifth fret on the G string. And we're just gonna do a semitone bend with our first finger. That's just, again, making it major. We're going to come back to that note, and that's what we're finishing the first part of the phrase on. We then do this uh, rundown from here. We go 7 to 5 on the D, and we go 7, 6, 5 on the A string, and we finish with a uh, third fret to fourth fret slide. So obviously we're in position five of the minor pentonic now, and we're making that minor third the major third. That's just the octave lower of that. Okay, I'll play the lick all the way through. up to speed. Okay, here's the next one. Okay, so we start off with this double stop idea. Um, we're going to put our second finger on the seventh fret on the B string, and our third finger goes on the eighth fret on the E string and we're gonna bend it up. It's not a full semitone, it's just kind of like a, a quarter tone, little slur bend. We then play with our first finger on the fifth fret, barring the B and E strings. We then do a tone bend on the eighth fret B string, and then playing the fifth fret on the E string. So those notes together. We're then going to do a rundown. We're going to go 8, 7, 5 on the B. And then we do exactly the same thing on the G. And those are triplets. Um, each, each string will be in one beat. Okay, now when I land on this uh, fifth fret on the G, I'm gonna slur that one. So I'll just bend it up a quarter tone. It wouldn't matter if you went all the way to the half tone, obviously. We then come to the seventh fret on the D string and we play seven, five. We then do a double stop on the seventh fret, G and B. Come back to the seven on the D. Then we finish off with a double stop on the fifth fret, playing uh, the B and the G string together. And we just hammer on our second finger to the sixth fret there. That obviously makes it the major third. And the lick gets resolved. So the second half. Play the lick all the way through. Okay, and the last lick we're going to take a look at. Um, I'll play it all the way through. Okay, so we're starting off in position one and we're gonna end up in uh, position two, touching upon position three slightly. And it's kind of based around dominant seven arpeggio idea. 
And arpeggio is just the notes of a chord played individually. So it's just like an A7 arpeggio with some extra notes added. So I start from the fifth fret on the E string. I then play four to seven on the A. I then do exactly the same thing on the D string. I then play five. I'm then going to play a dominant 7 arpeggio up the octave. So I'll start from the 7th fret, D string, and then go 6 on the G, 5 on the B, 8 on the B. And that's our A7 arpeggio. I'll play the whole thing uh, that we've got so far. Okay, so once we've landed on that 8th fret on the B, we're then going to play the 7th on the B. We then got to move up to the 10th on the B into position 2. We've then got this chromatic um, thing moving from position 2 into position 3, where we go 8, 9, 10. Also, that's playing the flat three, the three, and then the four. I slide up into position three to play the 12th fret. I then do the flat three to major third hammer on, which is eight to nine on the E string, and finish on the A note there, 10th fret B string. I'll play the lick all the way through slowly. Okay, as always, um, you don't have to take the licks exactly as they're written or exactly as I've played them. I've probably played them slightly different to how they're written on the tab anyway. Experiment with them, mess around with the timing, make it your own. These licks are just to give you some ideas about which notes you can land on, which notes you can bend, so on and so forth. Make sure you practice over a backing track too because um, it's much easier to hear where these uh, tones should be. Um, it's much easier if you've got that reference point and it's more fun. Next time we're going to look at some more of those licks but in different positions around the fretboard, so I'll see you guys then.